Welcome in everybody to another episode, Shepherding Wellness Vodcast. I'm here with my father-in-law, Randy Thee. Um, we have known each other for a long time. I've known you more in my life than I didn't know you in my life, if that's confusing. Because since not- I was 15 and now I'm 31, so we just we went over the hump. But anyway, I'm just going to introduce him for a second and then we're going to get into it and I'll let him talk. But um, I just have a couple things that I want to say about him. So... First off, so me and Indy started dating when I was when we were 15. I was a hot mess. Um, I don't know how he didn't kill me. I think he probably wanted to a few times, but he resisted the urges. And he has always just been such an influential figure in my life. He has um, loved me through the thick and the thin, um, through my highs and my lows. He has always been there. And one of the things that I'm always like amazed about him and Belinda, I always think about when they moved Indy to Detroit, Michigan. When I joined the military, um, you know, when I was 18 and my first unit was Detroit, Michigan and me and Indy decided to get married. We got married super young and they drove Indy up in a, um, in a U-Haul and moved her into these ghetto apartments in Detroit. She's 18, I just turned 19 and I don't know what they were thinking but they just trusted God that God was going to take care of us and that he was going to protect us. And they really just, um, held, held, um, us with open hands and allowed God to take us through all sorts of journeys and all sorts of different roads. And, um, but then we're, we're always there for us in the prof in the process, but no, never overstepped. And that was, that's always like the most, um, that's always the biggest, the biggest thing that I respect about him is he will never force himself on someone. He'll never force his um, opinions on someone. And he has a very evangelistic heart. He just loves people. I always say if I had to go to a party where I didn't know a single person, uh, Randy would be my first call to take with me because he always just has the ability to open people up and get them to um, dive deeper and not just um, stay surface level. And so I just love him a ton. Now our relationship has grown so much. He just said yesterday, he got kind of teary eyed yesterday morning because we've kind of been ministering together for the last three weeks. Um, We did the Chain Breakers event that we had been planning for two years. And um, so a lot of things are just kind of coming to fruition within this last uh, month or so of us doing ministry together and us just being um, really mouthpieces for God within this season. and it's felt really good. And so yesterday he woke up and was just telling me something that God had shared with him and that he was really going to miss us leaving because God's just been using us in such a mighty way over these last few weeks and days. And it's been really powerful and really fun. And so I'm so happy that he's my father-in-law because like, not only is he an amazing person and fun to be around, but now we are doing ministry together and it's been so powerful and um, so exciting. And so that's my introduction. That's my dad. I that's love him a, big, a lot. That's a big introduction. I don't know if I could follow up on that. <laughs> and so I'm just, I'm happy to have him here. But um, yeah, you just uh, off the cusp. Um, yeah, anything you got to say of that? How's this, how's this, um, these weeks been since Chain Breakers and everything? It, there has been a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, it has been mega download of so many different things yeah. and so many different facets of what God is teaching us. I mean, it's just like he just said, all right, are you willing? Yeah. Are you willing to obey? Are you willing to have your hands open? Because I can't do anything with closed hands. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of one of those, as you probably know in this, I sat back and watched all the interactions yeah. of all my kids and, you know, the growth of everybody. We've been praying for our kids. I don't even know how many years it's been yeah. now. It's a blended journalism, puts them in there. And God promised us that he would bring them all back to him and I've watched you know half over half of our family now come back even grandkids you know over the last couple weeks come back to him and it's just been it's just been overwhelmingly the love yeah you know from that he pours out his promises it's been it's been awesome to see and if you guys don't know so Randy and Belinda it's a blended family Randy had two children Belinda had two children they got married, they had Indy, and so it's kind of his mind and our situation. And so obviously with that comes a lot of um, hardship and a lot of um, structural issues and, you know, coming against the grains. Yeah. Um, but through that, what he's saying is, I mean, they got, you guys became um, Christians. We, when we you became were the Blender family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all joke about that. We were, 
all blended together, thrown in from many different aspects. I grew up in a Baptist church, and blended didn't grow up in a church at all. And well, you know, for me, it was just putting that old card in the back pocket. Yeah, I was saved when I was young. Is I've got an insurance card, I'm going to heaven. But you can live any way you want. Right. So you know, that's what I went through in my first marriage. Blended and I got married, and you know, we we had uh, Indy, and uh, it was just a. It was just a, a whole building process from the very beginning of trusting him, and and I look back and it's like, was it all? It was it whatever perfect? Never was. Yeah. Did we struggle a lot? Yes, we did. Did we, you know, have a lot of meetings? We used to go when we would go to church. We'd get, leave to go to church, and we would get about out of the driveway for the first time and all fought. All right, we're not going to go. Yeah, we're going to go. So we prayed. Yeah. And after about a year, we got to laughing and looking back because it's like. Wow, we made a mile marker mm. of prayers, you know. So it would be like mile markers that we would get a little further and a little further each time to church before you know the the, the, the screaming, yelling, arguments or whatever. We would stop and pray to, you know, settle ourselves. Yeah. And finally, it got to be, and it took a year. Yeah. It took a year before we could just get in the car, go to church, and come home. Yeah. Having to have big fights and stuff like that, arguments. So with with where the kids are at now to where where the kids are at now to where they were then, I mean, could you could you have imagined, like, all this happening? Because basically what happened, guys, for everybody that doesn't know, we had, um, you know, Randy got a um, a download from God to hold, host this event, which we uh, call Chain Breakers. It, there was a lot that went into it. It was a huge growth process. God was pruning us and working things out. And, and then it happened. It starts downpouring. Chaos breaks out. Um, we end up having to have the event under the pavilion. Randy had been having it, planning it to be in this amphitheater for so long. But what God did was he used it to have like literally like revival breakout where um, our family got completely transformed and just struck by the Holy Spirit. And it's just been a fire ever since. And so now what was a pretty dysfunctional family of sorts is really coming together for the works of the ministry. And, um, and those are, and those are Randy's children. And, and, and so, yeah, looking back at what it, what it was and what it is now, like what what do you think of with that? That's a big question. Yeah. What do I think? Well, I'm grateful. Yeah. Uh, none of it was easy. Uh, trusting in God every day, every yeah. moment from prayer to prayer. You know, when's this going to happen? When's you know? Because we get stuck in the carnal. We get stuck in the. Come on, you know, that, does it have to take this long? Mm -hmm. But it does. There's a, a process to everything that we go through. Yeah. And they're all, everything has different timing. Mm -hmm. With the four older kids, you know, there was this, you know, uh, angst because they have different parents, so different philosophies. We're trying to be Christians, you know, so there's this bantering back and forth like right. ping pong. And then Indy, of course, when she was born, and we said, okay, we're going to do right from the very beginning, you know. So she was different than all yeah. the rest of the kids, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, just, it's just been a process, you know, trying to, you know, pour into the older kids, you know, and pray for them to come around. And and then they have their own journeys, you know. Yeah. We, we know we want them to be a certain way, but God has to work on them. Mm. You know? So that's a process where God's working on each one of them. And then to watch in the last few years, God called us out to, you know, go into the wilderness, to go into the deserts, mm. to go into the islands and, yeah. and the mountains and, and wonder what, you know, and it's like, what what are you leading us to do now? What yeah. are you what what tr what trail are you taking us? What trip are you taking us? What are you wow. teaching us? And in the beginning, it was like, you just do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, the only thing I can say is, you know, be obedient. Yeah. You know, uh, you have to, with faith comes obedience as right. well. And um, we learned so much through that process. You know, during COVID, you know, you know, nobody could go to church. Uh, everybody was isolated, and I started a group in our, our barn out here called uh, Men Seeking God. Yeah. And that was just guys coming together, and it was anywhere from 20 to 30 guys, from 20 to 80-year-olds. Some of them were your friends. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, was, it was really good, but it was also another teaching lesson. But instead of just coming out to eat or whatever and pray, you know, God developed it into more of a teaching, more mm. of an iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And guys started really, you know, uh, leaning into it and really enjoying it. And they didn't want it to stop. But however, as we know, God always has different plans for us, too. Sometimes we start things and he says, well, I can do something better. And we have to allow him, you know, to work through that. 
<clears throat> so it's kind of a combination of many different things that came together. We had COVID that happened. We had our church that was kind of, you know, uh, God was pulling us out of it. Yeah. God was taking us into the desert. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I realized was, you know, he was saying, Randy, I want you to stop watching TV. Because mm. watching TV just made me crazy because wow. of all the stuff that was going on. Everybody knows that. The news. The news. Yeah. Uh, you had this side, that side, which doesn't matter anymore. Mm. I don't look at... I could care less whether you're a liberal or whether you're a, what is it? Conservative. Conservative. <laughs> Who even cares? Yeah, even cares anymore. And so, you know, social media, Instagram, which I liked Instagram because I got us all the pictures of everybody yeah. and the family, all that, everything. I turned it all off. I mean, the only thing I was doing now was just doing my emails and right. doing work stuff on the computer. And it was about a month after that, I was like, how quiet it is yeah that's what happened <laughs> the world's insanely wow. marching cret loud just just the anxiety from wow. it, just the fear and pain that's being driven into you from the world and what their their aspects and directions are of you know i want you to believe this i want you to believe that and so what it is it's satan working both sides and all sides to a convergence of madness Mm. fear wow driving us all to basically driving us away from god hmm. we have no independence on god anymore we don't depend on god anymore because we're dependent upon what's flushed into us brought into us mm. or zapped into us wow and um you know so started doing that um what and, sparked that that uh, season you talked about the desert the wilderness season what kind of sparked that for you guys yeah i kind of jumped around a little bit there didn't I? so we came out of covid we were our church was rebuilding back up. Things started taking off again. And uh, I was riding with a bunch of Christian guys. It was 2021, then it was April. And we were going down 33 Highway towards Kearney. And I, I looked over at the amphitheater in the grounds. Yeah. And God said, grabbed me and said, I want you to gather men there. And I'm like, uh, what? What's that mean? What's, yeah. this, what's this mean to me? God, I want you to gather men there. And at beginning, I thought it was a vision. Well, I didn't. The vision, I guess, in my head was I see this amphitheater, and that was yeah. the vision. I'm just going to say right now, it wasn't a vision; it was a calling. Mm. You know, God was calling me to obedient. Wow. To do something that He wanted me to do, and and I look back now, and it's He could have picked anyone, but I think He picked me because uh, I wasn't going to give up mm. no matter what was thrown <laughs> at me. Kind of bit hard of hard head. head. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm really hard headed. <laughs> Stubborn. If you know um, him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I proceeded to do that, and um, I didn't have any idea. You know, how do you just start this with churches? Yeah. You know, um, and so the first thing I did, well, I'll go talk to pastors. I'll gather up all the pastors in the area, you know, and uh, they have an alliance. And so I went and had breakfast with them and talked to them about it. And it just didn't seem like it was, you know, received, catch, received well, yeah. or catching fire. You know, it was just like, you know, good luck. And um, so I moved on, and I met this guy in Nasco, uh, which he was, he was from Bulgaria, moved to uh, Colorado Springs and was really involved with a lot of the big church things. Mm. And so he, he moved away from that to move here to get away from all the wow. work and all the stuff that goes into those big productions. Yeah, stuff. And he kind says, of, yeah, when he's, it becomes a machine. Yeah, it becomes a machine, and he, he was just burnt out. Yeah. It. And he's such a... God blessed guy, you know, he's yeah. really, he's really in tune. And he says, you know, you, yeah, you don't have to do that. What you need to do is you need to go talk to the men. Wow. If it's a men's thing, go talk, go, go to the churches, find the men, talk to the men's groups, go to their prayer breakfasts, go to their men's meetings, and then start talking to them. Mm. About it. So I did, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I said, God, you know, what do you want me to do with this? How do I do this? And it was just kind of like, you know, this would, this would come up, or that yeah. would come up, uh, and we went through 2021 and 2022 and 2022 is really when god said stop watching the news tv and everything wow. you know so i got to kind of follow this trail yeah and uh at that same time it was uh, uh because i was on a leadership team at church uh outreach i was going to re-resurrect the holy smoke mm. and uh you know this was kind of a last minute thing we only had a few months before that happens and i'm trying to get that up and going and uh holy smoke is a is a barbecue fundraiser that he did every year it was it would pop Thir off everybody would come yeah, through thir and 13 years 13 and, years yeah. yeah it was a great for the food pantry in Kearney. we would get anywhere from four to six hundred people that would yeah. come and we would feed them for free uh we like doing stuff like that yeah 
Uh, and, you know, so we went through that process. Well, coming in, there's so much that happened, you know, and God kept telling Belinda, my wife, and telling me, you know, it's time to leave. It's time mm. to leave your church. But I, I was hesitant, yeah. you know, because for me, the people in the church, they were my brothers and sisters. Right. I served with them for 30 years, and it was really hard for me to let go. Now, learn now where I'm at today. It's like, was I worshiping them mm. instead of God? Wow. Because we don't go to church for the people. We don't go to church for, you know, the, the pastor, or the worship team. We go to church to edify God. Right. You know, that's a, just a coming together to those that are outside of the church that are looking for a place. That's a great place to go to. And that's a great place to be uh, introduced to God and, you know, prayed for and, and uh, all these different things that, you know, are, are there that God can, you know, with the Holy Spirit talk to people and yeah. the music will move you and so on and so forth. You know that. So we don't need to get deeply into that. Yeah. But uh, it, uh, it changes a lot when the dynamics, you know, you're going through that field of it. And, you're, and at that time, that's when you and I talked a lot about, you know, this event and what, 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 what you know, the name and all mm. that. You came up with the name. Stop. And uh, <laughs> Chain Breaker. I, trust me, you know I me, mean? we can't, we had men of action, men send it, uh, like bullets and ammo. I mean, we had so many, we're a bunch of old guys. <laughs> we're, we're like, and we're dying laughing going, none of this is right. You know, yeah. it's all. It's all for uh, yeah. older age guys. Yeah, and we got we have to we have to be all encompassing. Yeah, because really, what I know now, what I can say now is, we want to pay it forward. So yeah. we want your generation. Right. So we're building some blocks, which is not a lot, and then your generation is going to build on that. And yeah. You're going to pay it forward in another generation, and we're going to take back. Wow. What God wanted us yeah. to have in the first place, and so we we get through that, and I'm going, well, okay, how do we? Do, how, how I mean, I'm feel like I'm failing all the steps because it's been a year. And so I, I go and I ask at the men seeking event, you know, who will, who will follow, who will, who wants to be a part of this? Mm. And, you know, God was kind of downloading to me, you know, you need to start a men's ministry. You're doing, you've been doing it, but mm. you need to do it in a, in a united way. And wow. so that's when God gave me, I want you to unite all the men. I want you to bring the community together and I want you to watch me pull the victory i'm going to do wow. the victory work and um so uh <laughs> Scout. dogs here. scouts here Scout, you gotta chill out yeah yeah <laughs> that's gonna be tough so uh from that point i started asking the guys and we, i'd get an offering for many different churches to come, yeah. come out here and to see who would join me and you know guys would listen and go well i'd volunteer but i don't know if i want to join you know to help build a ministry right that's tough to get, you know. So finally, I had a few, you know, four guys, five guys that actually volunteered and said that they, they, they see the vision, they see where this is going to go, and so they joined me. And that was 2022, so we worked on the 501c3, making it, a, you know, uh, a ministry, and did the work for that. And then at the same time, you're doing the thing that God first wanted you to do, mm -hmm. which was the vision, which is the calling, yeah. actually. And so that started in January of this year. And throughout this whole thing, you know, it's been a process for me to learn what God is teaching me. So mm. I had to open up my eyes. I had to open up my heart. I had to open up everything that I was going to do so that it, it would be received. I could receive it from him. And because what we do is we get busy in ourselves. Yeah. And we try to do what we want to do. And we don't allow uh, what God wants to do. And it's mm. the God thing. as a book that yeah. gave me. And, yeah, touch uh, on that for a second. So, like, so God gave you the the plan for it kind of the layout but he didn't give you everything he just gave you the idea right and then he let you kind of and what what was hard about that process of like dying to yourself and not doing that you know what i'm saying like touch on that a little bit because like you obviously did holy smoke for a long time so you've done events but what was different about this event like what god was trying to do through this event as opposed to like ones in the past trusting him yeah because you want it to be his event yeah. You know, it's really easy for us to take ownership. Mm. It's really easy for a person like me who controls things, you yeah. know. Yeah, you want me to do this, God, but the way I see it is the way man sees it. I want to mm. see I see this big stage, yeah. I see the, all these musicians, I see this theme of this music chain breaker through it all. I see the speakers where it's themed out. So I have this this vision, my vision, you know, but it's God's calling. Yeah. And um, and that's where he breaks you down. That, wow. That's that's not. So I would 
I would go up against things and it would be like, well, but this is, this seems normal. And what you're working through is what you think is normal is not normal. Mm. You look when you once you've gotten mad and gotten through it, you look back and go, "Wow, if I would have only listened, mm. if I would have only, you know, allowed more of me to be open to God, then this wouldn't have been such a hard process." The 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 thing that we've been talking about a lot lately is like the carnal mind versus the spiritual mind. You know, like being spiritually led, being led by the Holy Spirit versus being led by the carnal. Um, can you just elaborate on that to people? Like what that kind of process has looked like of like transitioning more into being spirit led and like what are some of the hardships with like learning how to do that? Well, yeah, it's a, a lot of times we, we think what we're doing is led by the Holy Spirit or God. And uh, we get into these situations that we put ourselves in mm. that is, you know, uh, self-inflicted. But you, word. but you think that it's what God wants you to do. Mm. And then you, you, you realize after the wound's been, you know, opened and you're, you're, you're in pain, it's like, what have I done to myself? Oh. This is not what God wanted. That's a good word. And uh, so uh, it's, 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 it's painful. Yeah. It really is. Uh, God makes things simple. We make things difficult. Uh, and it's, it's, it's been tough. I mean, I had the understanding, well, you know, because there's, uh, there's also money that's always involved in right. all this stuff. And when you're going through it, well, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to, well, we'll get sponsors. We'll get, you know, yeah. we'll get businesses. We, you know, it all seems simple because I've done it, you know, in racing, getting sponsors and so on. Right. It's easy. And, well, it wasn't so easy. You uh, know, oh, it's tough. When you're doing something for God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you know, and I asked and asked and people go, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, it's just kind of a, and I wasn't getting it. You know, I was like, okay, so I was, we can't do, we can't do it for this price. Maybe we can do it for this price, you know. And I'm, so I'm kind of trying to mm. carnally live through it. Mm. Well, if we want a big screen, that's four or $5,000. If you want to pay speakers, you want to pay musicians and pay for everybody, then that's more money that you have to draw in. And so, uh, you know, and I told everybody in the beginning, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to allow God to do this. We're, gonna, we're not going to work. We're going to let God do the work. Mm. And so my vision of that was my vision mm. at that point. That wasn't his, you know. So that talk, the way that I explained that stuff to my guys and stuff was probably out of line. I can't say probably what, knowing now it was out of line. You know, we're going to work underneath God's economy, and you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we're going to let God, you know, champion this. And um, well, God can't champion things if you don't give it to Him. <laughs> I mean, so I'll you're preach. you're running on your you're running on your own way of doing it, and so ultimately for me, what I learned was big production is what the world wants. Mm. God wants small production. Yeah, He wants intimacy. Mm. He was born in a manger. You know, it was in a manger, don't you? It is stinky. There was, you know, what there from all the animals on the ground. It wasn't a nice place, and so the day of the event, you know, going up to it, everybody said, "What are you going to do? What are you going to do if it rains?" I said, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. God's got this. Again, God's got this. You know, I'm, I'm putting it out there. God's got this. And God's up there going, uh, did you pray to me and say, if, you know, ask me if I got this? And huh, he's got this because he wants this. I'm assuming because he wants this. Yeah. He wants it this way. <laughs> so, you know, so it's Randy's way. And uh, so humbled. Yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> Struck by lightning. <laughs> So literally, we, literally <laughs> could have happened that day. So we get into, and as you know, we, we, you and I kind of had butt heads several times too, because I have a team back here pulling me, you're over in Hawaii, yeah. you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lean on you yeah. and, you know, get stuff from you and this. And it, in my mind, because of control, mm -hmm. my use to the way of doing control and business and everything else was that, you know, I did it a certain way. Yeah. Get it? I did it yeah. a certain way. So, you know, and God keeps telling me I want to do this in a simple way. So it got to the point where we had a board meeting and all the guys were like, we prayed. And it's like, we need to do this. We need to do, we don't sell no tickets. We're going to do this for free. And we were all really, it was peaceful. Mm. It was a good meeting. And I, you know, it's like, that's good. And then going into another month was like, well, we have no money for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of this. Imagine if you would have charged them, we would have had a refund everybody. Yeah. But did it come for the rain? <laughs> right. 
Uh, yeah. So there's so many things he knew. Yeah. We didn't know. Yeah. So uh, time keeps going, time keeps going. So we get up to, you know, the week before the event and people are still asking, what if it rains? You know, well, there's not, there's no rain in the forecast. It's like, Hasn't oh. rained in months. Yeah. <laughs> it's been dry here, really dry. And so that morning of, it's like all of a sudden the day before we started getting, oh, it's going to rain and storm. I'm like, hey, you know, well, now we're all going to pray. We're all going to pray. And now this is just, you know, this is, this is. Yeah. Yeah. I think people blame God when things, so I think you're touching on something really cool right now because I see this a lot where um, God will give you a partial vision. You know, maybe, you know, he gives you um, half of the graph and then you kind of come up with the other half of the graph. And then when your half of the graph doesn't come to fruition in the way that you saw it coming, you blame God. Oh, yeah. And you say, God, how could you do this? You told me you were going to do this. And then you kind of get angry at God in a way. And um, when he didn't, when he didn't give you the full layout, because if he gave you the full, because God is, God is not, he's not a liar. Right. So he, he follows through on his word. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you have to be so in tune to what his word actually is and not add to it. And so many times we add to it and we, we don't know how to be in spirit in every decision so then we start making decisions out of carnal, which builds more and more of the graph on our own understanding. We're leaning on our own understanding. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Because you know? I yeah. know some people listening are hearing what you're saying and like maybe being like, oh, you're being hard on yourself or this or that. But like, I think we all do it. We all do it to some mm -hmm. extent where we like, God will give us something, an idea or something to build. And then on top of that, we stack our own ideologies and we bring our own carnal mind, our own human reasoning into it. Well, this makes sense because this is the way I did it. Or no, well, you have to make money. You have to. That's the one I hear all the time. Well, you have to make money. And it's like, I mean, God well, kind of runs that. <laughs> it's kind of living in the world. Yeah. 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 Cause I, don't, he, I don't think we, we never looked at like making money. Not you guys, yeah. yeah. I'm just talking in yeah. general. Yeah, in general, yeah. yeah. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you know, towards the end, we're like, you know, well, if we go forward in the future, will we make money on doing these things? Or, uh, again, you start to let yeah. Satan or whatever those thoughts, carnal thoughts back mm -hmm. in again, and you have to push those away. But that's that's afterwards, yeah. another thought. So coming up until the day of the event, you know, it was like, okay, all right. So we get there, we're setting up, man, they got the stage all ready. The band's done the first, you know, uh, sound check. Yeah, did it was looking record. good. It was, it was looking good. It <laughs> sounded good, man. And so we, you know, we stop and we're, we're going to do prayer. I, looking back, we didn't do enough prayer. I can just tell you right now. You did, that's one of the reasons, one of the downfalls for a lot of this was prayer wasn't, mm. it wasn't done enough long enough and daily hmm. I mean, there was prayer but not like it should be hmm. i've learned that now and so we get there that morning where you know it's all set up looks good and uh it's like oh man look at the look at the horizon look, look at the, oh, it's gonna, oh. everybody's looking at radar uh, that's gonna rain how could it rain god why are you gonna rain on us you gonna rain on us? Uh. Yeah, so we did this all in your name yeah we did all this that we're praying so we're praying and, uh, you know, it, uh, it starts raining a little bit. Okay, that's, you know, it's going to rain a little bit. It's going to, we're all like, it's going to wash the dust and dirt away because it was so dry. You know, this is a good thing. It's a good thing because, you know, we don't start for another couple hours. And it started raining. And it started raining. It started hailing and lightning. It started <laughs> hailing and lightning. And I looked over because they have these antennas on the top of the amphitheater that if it picks up lightning or anything like that, the county commissioner or whatever the parks and whatever the board guy is, they call it. They'll call an event. They don't yeah. care because you know, it's all about the people. So they kept looking at me, the parks people, and, and I, it's like, they could call this. They should have called this. Yeah. And they didn't. They just kept looking and going, you know, like, you know, they were, I could see they were trying to lean into some faith too to, yeah, maybe this will just, you know, pass, you know, and, you know, uh, and it just kept coming. And it just kept coming. And then 12 o'clock start time, it's still pouring. And they got all the equipment out of the field covered up and, you know, they got a cover over it and it starts hailing. And at that point I was like, what did I do wrong? You know, and everybody's backstage and they're looking at me and they're looking at my face going, Randy, what's up? What's wrong? I, I, and I didn't say anything to them. Were you in them. shock? I was. I was actually in shock. <laughs> I was staring out the back, looking over the lake and watching that rain hit that lake. And I was like, oh, my lands, it's start time and it's raining. Oh, God, what have I done wrong? It was like. 
did I let you down in some yeah. way? You know, is this, I was kind of in my head there space for a minute that, well, this is probably my fault. I didn't do something right. And, you know, which is wrong. You know, you shouldn't think right. like that. And, uh, you know, and somebody said something and what are you thinking? And I didn't want to answer him. And then Connie, Connie Meek came over and goes, can I pray for you? I said, yes. And I got on my knees and guess she's short and she was praying for me. And uh, I'm like, oh, that feels so good. It's like, you know, getting your ear scratched, and <laughs> your back scratched. And, oh, thank you for the prayer, Connie. Thank you for the prayer. And then I get up and people are starting to ask questions. You know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I look across. By then I had walked out on the front of the stage. <laughs> I walked out. I looked at the guys and they're looking at the tent, you know, and they're, they're talking back and forth. Hey, there's water coming in and it's going to damage this equipment. And I'm like, and they, they looked at me, we got to call this, Randy. And I'm like, oh, no. And uh, I actually had a piece come over. Yeah. You know, it was like, okay, we're going to call this. And uh, he said, well, you, you know, we got that big pavilion up on the top of the hill. You know, it's, you paid for this whole place. Go, you, you can use it too. And it's like, okay. Uh, and I think some of the guys, people on the stage, I don't know. At this point, I'm going to be honest with you, whoo, it was like a hurricane hit. Yeah. That things started moving and things started shaking. Yeah. And, you know, people were starting to put equipment up because they didn't want it to get wet and, you know, people are going, okay, what do we do next? And I think, I don't know if it was a group of you guys yeah. or whatever, go, well, we're going to go up to the, you know, up yeah. to the pavilion. And everybody's starting to ask me, what do we do? What do we do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, where is Rick, the guy in orange? Remember, if you have a problem, today is not my day to do this. You go call on Rick. And I turned around, and Rick's standing there staring at me. And I'm like, <laughs> well, Rick. And he goes, well, I don't know. <laughs> so we're, we're in this dilemma. What do we do? And so I grab you know, the, the guitars and uh, equipment that I brought there to, for them to use. I go, well, I'm going to go put this up real quick. You know, and that gave me some time away from all the questions and the answers. So I, I, I packed up and went out to the truck thinking, how do, we, how, do we, how do we change this? What do we do? I'm praying to God, you know. And at the same time, blue skies. Yeah. It, start, it was like, it, this is over. And they yeah. called it when it was over. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh no! Now what? But we had heard that there was another flight coming in two hours uh, from there that was going to do it all over again. And then everybody said, "No, gather up here. We're all gathering up here." So yeah. uh, Belinda comes and gets me at this time, and she goes, "Randy, it's time for us to go up the hill." Yeah. And she goes, "You know, she she knows me. She, she says, you know, you did what you had to do. You've had your moments to clear your head out. Let's go.'" So she grabs my hand. We're going up the hill, and I'm thinking, "Oh man, how's this going to work?" Because there's nothing. There's no. There's nothing up there. Yeah. It's just open pavilion, and I'm thinking, speakers, microphones, this. There's nothing. So I get up there, and you guys are already. Everybody's all sitting around in yeah. all the picnic tables, and everybody's focused. And uh, I don't even. I think I missed probably some of that. Did, yeah. You know, Shane introducing and doing whatever, and then when I got up there, Ricky had just started talking, and uh, so the first speaker was up. And talking, and I'm looking around, going, "Well, I guess this is where God really wanted it." Yeah, <laughs> it's the amphitheater. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, uh, "Well, you know, my pride's going well." You know, your big thing. I'm looking, and I'm looking there. I'm looking right over all the people, and I'm looking at the you know, amphitheater, and I'm going, "Wow, that was quite the deal all set up down there, real prideful, like you know." And now look where we're at. We're up here, but you know what? At the end of the night, that's what God wanted. Yeah, it was so amazing. Yeah, I mean. People outside or whatever could say, well, their thing didn't happen. But you know what? What, what God intended yeah. and what God wanted yeah. was all right there. Yeah. It wanted to be. He just wanted He just wanted some kindling in a fire. Exactly. You know, and uh, he started it. Yep. And you guys jumped in, and he, the word was perfect, threaded yeah. through until mm -hmm. the end of the night. The prayers, the people, I think the guys' lives that were changed. Yeah. Uh, it just kept going from that day. There was other group meetings after that. There was six people baptized mm -hmm. in our front yard on monday it's been a it's been a blessing yeah from what's happened so good and i have myself i've kind of like processed back down into my little you know i don't talk as much i'm kind of still trying to figure out what's going on what you know what's next you mm. know what's next what mm. am i supposed to do next what's my next steps and so i i I'm going to pray really hard this yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to bring men, men around me and people around me. They're going to do the same thing. Yeah. They're willing to do the same thing, pray hard, and ask the questions. 
what's next? Mm, Where so are you going to take us next? What do you want us to do with men or women or both? Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of ideas thrown out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, tribe is not just guys. It's yeah. guys and girls, and we can divide that out. But that's something for another time. Right. So through this, did God take me to a desert for a reason? Yes, he did. Yeah. Did God take me to an event that I thought would be you know, a well-pleasing place that I wanted God to come to because, you know, you want to clean up your house before you, you know, invite yeah. him in. And he, I, did I learn something? Yeah. He don't care. He yeah. don't care where you're at. Yeah. He don't care if you're in a back alley downtown and, right. you know, and it smells terrible or out in a field in the middle of nowhere or on an island that you're stuck on and you can't yeah. go anywhere. He, he'll still provide everything you need. It just won't look like what you want. Yeah. Oh, steak. There's a coconut. <laughs> his ways are above ours. Yes, his you, ways are above ours. You know what? Um, what the Holy Spirit was kind of just bringing to mind while you're talking about that, and I don't. I'm just gonna leave it open to you how you dive in. But I remember like some conversations that we would have back in the day when we talk about like doing ministry together or things like that. Or we were, we were just it was like before it was definitely before we were had any, I don't know. Well, I can speak for myself. Before I had any spiritual maturity, um, I was just kind of like still trying to do good things, you know, rather than God things, still doing bread and things, like still like just, but but I had this like fire in me where I wanted more, but I didn't have direction. And then I remember having conversations with you and you were just kind of like ready to retire. Like you just wanted to like, you're like, I've been working my whole life. I'm ready to just chill out. And sometimes you don't remember the conversations that we have and you'll be like, I never said that, but you did say this. And I'm just going to remind you, you are a couple conversations. You said, I'm just waiting to die. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty much just waiting to die. And, um, but you have changed so much since then. And now you're like, there's a fire lit in you. Um, and you want to serve and you want to pour in and you're, and you're, you and you and Belinda are, are spiritual mother and fathers at this like new church startup and, you guys are pouring into my kids and, and like, I'm like, man, this is where it's at. It's like, what, <laughs> what's changed? What's changed since then? Or what, 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 what do you have to say about that? About me bringing Ooh, that up? That's, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. to be honest with you, because that, that's a whole lot of that taking you to the, taking us to the wilderness. I'd come to a point from being in a church for 30 years. And I just say the church because we were, we were, we're Christians. Yeah, you know, that that label. We're Christians. We we taught Sunday school. We did this. We did that. We did this. We did that. And you know, and it's like, okay, I'm 67 years old. I've worked since I was 16. You know, I'm tired. I'm burnt out. You know, and military did, did it I, all. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know what what's the point? I mean, you know, this is you know, and it's like there's no satisfaction. There's you know, I was I was always ready on Sunday morning to go to church. You know, for the two hours and come home, it's like you know, uh, it's like getting a breath of oxygen when you're in <laughs> yeah, a dirty that's smog. A good way to... <laughs> it's like, oh, here's some clean air, <laughs> and it it uh, and I, I what I know now today, I was stuck under a, uh, a spirit of religion. Wow, and I was stuck in in this. This is all you have. This is all you get. You're not going to get any more. Yeah, and it's like okay, uh, and yet I felt all the time. Like the Holy Spirit was always knocking at a door. Mm. Let me in. Mm. Let me in. And he can't talk to you. He can't be with you if you don't want him in. Yeah. If you're doing something wrong and he's saying, hey, don't do that anymore. You know, you need to repent. And you just keep doing it. Guess what? He finally says, well, what's the point of me talking to you anymore? Wow. What's the point of me being with you anymore? Yeah. You know, and because, well, I, I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm religious. You know, I'm a Christian. And I realized when he took me out into the desert, that is, damn, that is Satan wow. at his best. Huh. He has deceived us. Goes, oh, I don't even, it's, I don't even have, have real words for it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so hard to explain, but what I know today uh, and what I read today is different than what I read, say, back in church days. Mm. And what I read today is so clear and so, you know, it's like it talks to me. It says, hey, you know, uh, in Ephesians 4, you know, about uniting us. You know, we're not in this country as Christians. We're not united. Yeah. There's a church on every corner. Yeah. There's, 
there's pastors, preachers, this, that, everywhere, and yet we look at a nation that we think, well, we're a Christian nation. Yeah. We're as evil as evil can get when you think about it. And are we evil because we, the church, didn't unite for yeah. Christ? Wow. It's all about Jesus. It isn't about us. It isn't about controls. It isn't about money. It isn't about how many seats or how many counts or mm. this or that and, and uh, how many good things you did or how many classes you provided or, you know, oh, we do youth group on Wednesday night and we have a great pizza party. Wow. Wow. That ain't what it's about. Yeah. Not today. If I got those kids on Wednesday night, they're going to learn God. They're mm. going to learn They're going to learn who Jesus Christ is. They're yeah. going to learn who the Holy Spirit is. They're going to learn, you know, everything that there is to know. And there's so much that hasn't been taught us because I think they were afraid to teach it because mm. they were afraid to touch on it. Wow. When you start talking about demons, when you start talking about uh, miracles and mm. healing, uh, people get all out of whack, don't they? Yeah. I mean, it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, we yeah. know we've read the Gospels. We know we've read about, you know, what Jesus and his 12 disciples did. Well, you better keep reading. What about the 70? Yeah. What about, you know, all these other groups Preach. after that? Nowhere in there have I been able to find yet where it says that it would just went away. Yeah. Now, they use it in the chapter where they're talking about, uh, where they're talking about love. Mm. Where if, if, if we had love, Mm. If we if loved our neighbors, if we yeah. loved each other, there would be no need for healing. There would mm. be no need for anything because we, there would, we would be so much in love with God. We'd be so much in love with each other, and we'd love our neighbors. We would just be in total communion, total yeah. uh, unity, total, uh, we, we'd be one. Right. You know, one, and we're not. So we're so divided. You have to take that in context, I think, yeah. that that's only... Because it's it's saying that for a reason. Mm -hmm. You you wouldn't have to do these things if you mm -hmm. just had this. Yep. Uh, because you jump over to the next chapter and it's just the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think, I you know any lesson or anything that we taught during Sunday school and stuff, it was always kind of pre-programmed. It was mm -hmm. always the same topics, no matter what. In 30 years, you hear it all. It's all about salvation. It's all about get baptized. Yeah. Here here's your here's your Here's your stance. Here's what you get in life. You know, uh, now go, go get now serve. Now go be a part of the church. Now go, you know, uh, and you know, how long do you drink milk till you get the steak? Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can drink milk forever as long yeah. as you're going to keep throwing these little classes or these things at you. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's just where I'm at today. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be in a different you know step yeah. in life. Uh, I look at it like stair steps going to heaven. Yeah. Uh, as you get closer and closer to heaven, you you should be getting closer and closer yeah. to God. Because do you want to die today just to just receiving and mm -hmm. go be with God? And God's going to say, "What did you do? Yeah. Where's your crowns?" And you're going to throw yeah. them. I mean, so I would rather enter in heaven and go, "Oh, I man, I tried to do the best I could. Yeah. And you gave me all these opportunities, and I either accepted them or didn't. Mm. And today I hear His voice because I don't have the world." In wow. my head, I hear his voice, and um, you know that was part so of good. Yeah. part of the the desert, part of the taking me out and, mm. and cleaning me up. I still got a long way to go. Yeah, uh, and you know that, uh, we're, and we're working through that. Mm. And you, we were talking earlier about you know I woke up the other morning and because we've been talking about doing ministries together. Mm -hmm. You have shepherding wellness, and I have uh, the tribe of Christ. You know, blending those together, yeah. and moving around, doing things, and, and before I couldn't see it, I couldn't. It wasn't tangible because you're there, which just seems like a million miles away in yeah. Hawaii, and I'm over here, and I'm fighting a battle here, you're fighting a battle there, and you don't get to do it together. Right. And so the last couple of weeks, we got to do this together, and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I just got a really emotional. It's like, if we did this together, I don't want it to quit. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, I see it now. Yeah. I see what God is, 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 is appointing is something he says, Randy and Brent, here's a door. You're going to enter? Mm. You're going to pass by and shut yeah. it and let somebody else do it. Right. Uh, and it's like, wow, i got to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, and we got to figure this out or yeah. something. I'll pray to God and, and figure out what it is next. Um, and so it's like, gosh, I don't really want you to leave. <laughs> because, you know, going to these men's groups that we've gone to and going out to, say, Chad's Barn or Bill's, or Bill's uh, Garage for men's groups and uh, – 
what's going on. You could see the wanting. You could see men want to be changed. Um, and it's like, wow, that's yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? Let me lay that out for people real quick. So basically what, what Dad's talking about here is um, in, our, in our little town here that I grew up in, um, that dad lives in. Well, he, he's in Holt, but then we have a town, Kearney. So I grew up in Kearney. I grew up in a Baptist church there. Um, and there's kind of, there's um, some animosity between the churches. There's some, there's some tension sometimes. There's not, there definitely isn't a unity here. Like we have churches everywhere. We got a Lutheran church. We got, you know, we got a Baptist church. We got, we got all that, but there's not, there's not one mindedness as the church is called to, right? And we That's know right. that the church is supposed to be being refined and built up and edified so for the return of Christ. You know, yes. the bride is supposed to be coming together. And what we're kind of seeing is it's kind of getting divided further and further apart. Well, within that, though, there's a remnant group that are on fire, that understand how to listen to the Holy Spirit, that understand that healing is still available to, today, that understand that deliverance is important, that understand the ministry of Jesus, that understand um, what the gospel is actually saying and that salvation isn't just... Uh, Jesus accepting my sins, uh, coming to my heart, and then I'm good to go to heaven someday, um, which I want you to touch on in a second. But So there's a group here that they're not against the church. They actually love the church. They love the church, but what they have identified is that the church is missing the mark. As we know, the church would, be, if we read Revelation, we, we would understand that the church is going to miss the mark and that there will be people like apostles and prophets and called to the refinement because it's not just shepherds and che teachers job to guide the church it's a it's the fivefold ministry it needs yes. everybody and needs the evangelists and needs the shepherds and needs the teachers and needs the prophets and needs the apostles and they're supposed to all work together and so why the church has gone so astray in my opinion is um it's so factionated it's so divided and that's because everyone is um operating under the wrong mindset of what the church is supposed to look like and what the church is going to be. And so it's not that we have all the answers or anything like that. All it is is that the Holy Spirit has lifted the veil from our eyes and he's shown us where the church is misplaced right now and what it would take to overcome that. And so there's a group basically that's actively praying and hoping that the church would be unified, not trying to divide, not trying to tell people don't go to church. But if you're not getting fed at church, then and you're not serving, and you're not being called to a higher purpose, then something's up. If you're just going there, if you picked your church because the pastor preaches a good sermon, you're kind of missing the whole point because yeah. church is meant to be something deeper than that. And so right now, what Randy is talking about here is, is there's, there's a group that's coming together that are actually doing the work of the ministry, and they're actually um, living into the fullness of the calling uh, and the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And the religious spirit is always going to be against moves of God. We see when Stephen was um, about to be stoned by the Pharisees and Sadducees, he said, you have always been against moves of the Holy Spirit. So there, that, and, then, and Jesus warned multiple times about the yeast of the Pharisees. How, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And the disciples were all confused, like, oh, is he talking about us forgetting bread? And he's like, and he's, it's just over their head. And he's like, no, like, don't be like that. Because, and he wouldn't have been warning if it was going to die off with the Pharisees and Sadducees, but the Pharisees and Sadducees still exist today. And those are the people that are against the move of God, and that's a dangerous spot. It's a dangerous spot to be, to be, because um, Jesus said, you can, you can blaspheme the Son of Man, but don't you dare blaspheme the, the Holy Spirit. Because I gave you the Holy Spirit as a gift, and you have the Holy Spirit within you. And so when you see brothers and sisters operating in the Holy Spirit, don't you dare blaspheme that. That's right. That's correct. And so that's the, that's the tension that is happening right now. That's the danger. That's the, if anybody watching this, if, if they're feeling some sort of um, spiritual tension in the air, that's because that, this is what the clash is. The clash is, I, I don't want to say it's not the world against the church. It's kind of the modern day church against the move of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is the clash that's happening. And there is a separation that's happening. We're seeing there's a movie that's coming out that we just watched a preview for um, on uh, cessationalism. And for anyone that doesn't know, cessationalism is basically the belief that uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't work in the same way that he did with the apostles. And that, 
that's just not, I, I don't believe that's good doctrine. I don't believe it's biblical. It's not what I've experienced. And then people can say, well, oh, you can't base things off experience. The Bible isn't exhaustive. It said Jesus did many, John said Jesus did many more miracles, but it won't all fit in here. You know, it wouldn't all fit in that letter. And so we have to understand, like, Paul's letters, those are letters to a specific church. You have the same Holy Spirit in you that Paul had in him. You can do the miracles that Paul did. And if you don't believe that, then um, I don't know what to say to you. Like, I, I hope that you'll find truth at some point. But what I wanted to ask you, unless, do you have something to say on what I just said? I wanted, you, I wanted to ask you this question. I wanted to ask you, what is different about the gospel that you believed in the past and the gospel you believe now? The gospel in the past was a, in the past. You know, these are just teachings. Uh, it, it meant something. Uh, what I believe today is it's living. Yeah. It's breathing. It's not changed. I don't find, you know, now that I'm clear of many things, I'm getting clear-headed. The Holy Spirit has not changed anything whatsoever. He's the same the day that God introduced him to us. Wow. is just as he is today. And he yeah. will be the same until Jesus Christ comes back. Wow, so good. There's, there's, there can't be any change. There can't be a thought process of, well, it's only for that short period. Well, then if it's only for that short period, what good is anything after that? Yeah. I mean, what was the point of just bringing the Holy Spirit into the world for... 60 or 70 years right to do some things and then just to leave you and and you can speak from experience on that because the holy spirit has changed your life over these mm. this last year especially yeah tremendously a yeah lot. watched What's, it in my family watched it with my wife my wife was in a car wreck you know totaled the car was a had tremendous neck and pain and back you know they've operated on her back and made the back fine but her neck she lived in an eight to ten pain range every day uh and uh had migraines since she was a kid and uh, during the process, we uh, uh, gone to some prayer nights and uh, with people that were that believed that everything, nothing has changed. It's yeah. always the same. Yeah. It's ne it's it's uh, the Holy Spirit is who the Holy Spirit is. Wow. Uh, and prayed over my wife Belinda, and uh, her migraines went away and never came back. Well, what's that? Who who, who does that? Hmm. You know, if the Holy Spirit is still alive. Cause yeah. Was, you know. Uh, same thing when we went over to uh, Hawaii. Uh, quite honestly, I don't have any idea what what before then what Deliverance was, other than it was a movie. The Deliverance. <laughs> Run from the banjo music. Okay, well we got off subject here a little bit. <laughs> Had to get funny in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's terrible. That was bad. Oh, that's bad. Let's cut that out later. No. But anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, we're talking about it, and uh, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So I grew up through the first, you know, Jesus movement, you know, that came out of Chuck Smith's church and all that out in California. I mean, I didn't know who Chuck Smith was, you know, because I was only probably in ninth grade back yeah. then. But going to the church that I went to and watching the, uh, the, the landscape change to, you know, playing the Jesus movement mm -hmm. and the long hair. I mean, everybody that had long hair and hippies were still long hair and hippies, but yeah. they loved God. They were, wow. They were trying to champion for Jesus, and that lived for a while. And uh, it was interesting how it came and went. Uh, and I'd watch things either on TV or, or churches around us where they would do revivals and Pentecostal things. Yeah. And, and I remember my dad talking to one of those guys one time, well, if you can heal, well, then why don't you go to the hospital and heal everybody in the hospital? Mm. And that stuck in my mind and, you know, and all this, you know, talking in tongues and all those things like this. And I didn't understand it. Yeah, I didn't really want to. I wanted. I was focused what I was being taught. Yeah, and I was in the church that, that all oh, that's all crazy stuff. Yeah, and so that seed gets wow. planted. The yeast then, of the Pharisees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bunch of it. It sits yeah. there for a long time, man. And talk about a cake pie yeah. bread. It's huge. And so uh, we watched the movie. It was a a movie over in Hawaii. Come out in Jesus' name. Yeah, come out in Jesus' yeah. name. And I watched it, and I remember being so upset. Belinda got it. Me, it's just the way that they presented it was presented just like what I grew up with. And I'm like, no. Got this, triggered. It triggered. It triggered it all. And I'm like, this is insane. This is crazy. This is not true. This is a lie. You know, and so on and forth. I remember going to the car and just sitting there and going, no, uh -uh, I ain't buying this. I ain't buying yeah. it. Was, this is insane. I, something was inside me was saying, you need to slow down and 
listen. You know, Belinda was kept trying to explain it to me. And uh, she's, she knows me well, and she knows how to uh, present things to me. Yeah. So she, she dug around. I don't know if she got with you on that. And they dug around, and they found Robert Morse, mm. Free Indeed, which was nine years old. And so I, I watched that. Uh, we watched it at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Or maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I woke it was up. a wild time. <laughs> it was a, ooh, that was a wild week. So watch the movie. Upsets me, you know. And it's like this is insane. So Belinda finds this other guy. So in the middle of the night, she's underneath the underneath the sheets, bright glow. And I'm like, what the heck is going on now? And she goes, you got to see this guy. I got to see what. So I, you know, I will put the sheet over my head too, and I'm watching this guy. And he's speaking about. He's a he's a preacher in yeah. Texas, uh, and I'm listening to him, and I'm because I get him. I, yeah, his voice. The way he speaks, the way he articulates, the way he says things, yeah. I understand. Right. You know, uh, and so he's explaining uh, what he went through as a pastor. Yeah. And he was, uh, he never heard of any of this before. Mm. And he went through uh, a class, a workshop about it because he was interested. Yeah. And uh, his wife and everybody in the class was changed dramatically. Wow. And he says, well, you know, I, I, I can't attend the next one, but I'll read the book and I'll, I'll travel on the road because I've got some speaking in, uh, engagements to do. And uh, while he was out on the road, he was having problems. Mm. I mean, he couldn't, he just couldn't get in his mind, you know, what, what all that meant. And mm. so it was hard for him to even do what his uh, speaking engagements. So he called the guy and the guy prayed for him. And uh, you have to watch it. Yeah. It's, you know, and so he, he, he leads through it. So I, I, I watched probably hours of this and I go, yeah. all right, I totally understand yeah. what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how could we not have ever known this? How does yeah. this not, how does all this get lost? How yeah. does, how do we not teach this? Yeah. What was the purpose of right. fear? Right. Fear. Satan found a way a long time ago how to control what he wants with the movies about exorcism and all Everything. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And we get it in our mind that, Oh, you can't be possessed. It's not about possession. Yeah. It's about being demonized. Right. It's about being attacked. You know, our bodies being attacked yep. and our souls being attacked. Yep. Uh, because if he can attack us mm -hmm. Christians and keep us silent, mm -hmm. he, he don't care about the rest of the world. Right. And you can go do whatever you want because he's already got you. Yeah. But if he can get us all under, under one roof of being fear and yep. an anxiety and all that, and he controls us. Wow. And so I, I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out now. So I go upstairs and find you. You're yep. up. <laughs> so you and I sit on the couch when we talk, and, and you take me through deliverance. And uh, I was like, wow, chickens are going crazy outside. <laughs> I think they're going, being expelled into the chickens. <laughs> I, it's, it was wild. Yeah. I got to admit, you know, I've, I've, I've been running through life this way. Again, it's part of my... <laughs> wilderness trip. yeah well i didn't know the wilderness trip was going to head off down <laughs> down to some crazy island you know yeah it's full of voodoo and hoodoo <laughs> i'm like ah yeah. you know and at the end of it i'm like wow i feel clean yeah I feel light i feel like there's you know i had anxiety for a long time i could i hate flying i hated this stuff and it's like gone and uh you know it, is it radically overnight yeah. no no it's, it's a, a process pro it's yeah. a process did a bunch come out yeah. then yes I'm 67 years old. You got to think if you're if you're 12 years old, yeah. you probably have hardly you probably don't have anything. Yeah. If you're 30 years old, eh, you got some. Yeah. You know you you got you got some strongholds. Yeah. You've got some generational curses. Yeah. And it says that in the Bible. Yeah. You know if if you do bad, you right. know, generation after generation yep. will you know right will follow. However, if you if you if you stop doing what you're doing, stop sinning, recognize those strongholds, wow. you can pray. Yeah. And you change your family then yeah. and you be obedient to the Holy Spirit, it changes out. Cuts them off. Cuts them off. Yeah. Cuts them off. And so how do you you know, people are thinking, I'm thinking, you're probably thinking, you're thinking, yeah. how's that how's that work? Yeah. Well, read. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Just start with Matthew, go right yeah. through there. It tells you yeah. all about it. Um, uh, it'll you know, it'll wake your mind. Yeah, up. the Holy Spirit's gotta unveil it, you know. You gotta it's yeah. a living word. Um and there's also what what what's I'm going to say two things. What, what gets really confusing is when um, word of God is in the Bible. This is just another example of how the English language jacks us up. So there's, there's word of God, but what happens there is you have three different Greek words getting translated as word of God. So you have rhema, 
you have graphite, you have logos, and they all have different meanings. So there's the the there's the logos, which is usually Jesus, like when John said, like um, the word was in uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word, yeah. So that's yeah. logos, and then you have Rhema, which is like revelation word. God still gives us revelation; mm -hmm. He speaks through the Holy Spirit to us. And that's what it talks about when it says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's talking about the rhema word of God. And then there's also the, um, the scripture word of God, which is graphi. That's where we get graphic and graph from. And yeah. so, so what you had, you had a rhema, you had a revelation. Like, because the people's argument right now is like, well, if it's not in the Bible, well, first off, it is in the Bible. You have to have the unveiling and you have to have the revelation to understand it. And I can speak for, for this guy, like, we... We will always were like, we just want the real Randy. Like, we were just like, we always just want the real Randy because there's times where dad would, um, he would be in spirit and it would be beautiful. We'd all have community. We'd be doing, and we, we all have our mistakes, but we're just talking about you today. I obviously was not perfect. I have my mistakes. Like, we would get into it at times. Um, but the reason why we would say that is because more often than not, um, it was, you were in carnal Randy, where it's, I got to mow the lawn, I got to get these things done, I got and, and it, it was anxiety, and it was stress, and it was all this, and we were just like, we just want this. Well, what happened with deliverance was, because the purpose of deliverance is intimacy with God, because mm -hmm. it cuts out all the strongholds, it cuts off all the generational, it cuts off any of the bondage that you're in, and then the Holy Spirit begins to v fill up those, those rooms that instead of leaving them void. And so what happened that night when you received all that deliverance, you got a really heavy vision from God that night where God literally met you in your sleep and spoke to you and gave you very specific instructions because then we talked that morning and I was like, oh my goodness, and I got dreams that night and it was, it was just very powerful. And then also after that, so you heard from God clearly, but then you were able to live more fully into who you were called to be because all that baggage was gone. And so then we, like, that's why we've had such beautiful community this mm -hmm. last year. And so for people watching that are like, oh, I don't know about it, I don't, I don't have any, if his life looks, my life looks so much different. His life looks so much, our community together looks so much different. Everything has changed because we understand the fullness of the gospel. We understand that Jesus came to set the captives free. We understand he gave, came and gave yes. us authority under, in the spiritual realm. All authority has been given to you under heaven as is on earth. What you bind on earth is also bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is also loosened. These are all scriptures, guys. And it's, and it's here for us. And, and we just have, all we have to do is we have to take it. He gives it to us. We are sons of a king. We have to understand we're a royal priesthood. We can live into that. And I'm not talking on a platform. I'm not talking on a pedestal. I'm just saying live into your spiritual authority and your whole life will change. And that's what that's what you experience, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't even know what to say after that. That was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, well, let's just close with this. How has... Um, how has, just give us a brief little synopsis on how your relationship with God has changed from deliverance mm. and from hearing from the Holy Spirit and just from putting aside religion, putting, because it's not all about, um, it's not all about deliverance. Some of it is putting away those human ideologies of cessationalism that like that was for then, this is now, like just a whole different concept of how you're how you've, your mindset has changed towards the Holy Spirit and towards our living in freedom and our calling, how has that changed your intimacy with God on a daily basis? Wow. Um, I can tell you one thing, that once you have it, yeah. you get a taste of it, or it, it, you're this relationship that with the Holy Spirit, you, you're re, like for me, regaining, is it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can... You can get into situations where you you need to talk to somebody. I don't know what to say. And man, he just flows wow. right through you. Gives so you what to say. Uh, gives you peace. Uh, but you have to you have to be in tune to him too. Mm. You have to be you have to listen. And the more you get out, the more you recognize the things that are strongholds or sin in your life. The more what he does. Here's this is my explanation. Yeah, of do it, it. Is you're given a house, but it has no windows or doors or anything in the beginning. Mm. And so it's just open for anything. And then you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, ex you know, you're, you're, the Holy Spirit enters you, and that house is closed up. Mm. And so now you have a house that he's given you, a clean house. He has a house that is beautiful. And then you, you, your, your nature 
as you're looking out into the world, yeah. you go, oh, but I like that. I like my neighbor's Corvette or whatever. So you walk over and you crack that window. Here comes a demon in. You don't know it, but he's in your house somewhere. Mm. Of lust. Or, oh, wow. Or greed or yeah. whatever. I want, I, want, I want one of them. And you shut that window back. You know, well, you've already let it in. It's like letting a fly in. Yeah. And so now this is attached to you when you were clean. And so now you're dealing with it. And sometimes you may not even know it. And then you walk over to your back window and the girl next door is out sunning in her bikini. And you go, whoa, she's hot. And you open up the window. You crack the window. <laughs> and boom, here comes. Yeah. Here comes, uh, you know, lust, and here yep. comes uh, pornography and everything else. Because then you close that window, and you think, well, I close that window, nobody knows. And then, you know, it starts feeding. That, that demon's in there feeding on you. He goes, no, you want, you want more. You want more. Because you all, whatever they come in to do, they want to start a party in your house. Yeah, yeah. You know? they, don't, they don't want to be in there alone. No. So they're, like, doing everything they can to, to wow. attempt you, to bring yeah. temptation around yep. you. Yeah. Because they, they're, you know... He's the ruler of this world. Yep. Let's just face it. Uh, and Lord God says he's yep. the he's a, he's the Lord of the, in the saint, or he's yeah. the <laughs> he's the uh, prince or whatever it is yeah. in this world. Yep. And uh, so it just keeps happening. Before you know it, you got all this baggage. Yeah. That's, uh, that's attached to you now. And uh, so, does the Holy Spirit talk to you? How can he? How how can he talk to you? How can he hear it? How can you can't hear all it. that it's noise? The same, it's the same thing on the phone. What, I don't even know what de- what that would be. You've attached this thing to you that you 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 have it in your back pocket. You have it everywhere, and it's it's, it's a, like trying to hear your wife while you're texting. Yeah, you don't you don't hear. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And she knows. Yeah, you didn't hear me. Yep. So, and so she, then she'll stop talking. And she'll stop. Right. She stops talking. Well, I'm not gonna talk to you. Because he stands you. at the door and knocks. He doesn't force his way in. Nope. He that's says, all. if you open the door and let me in, I'll come and dine with you. Yeah. That's that's what it's all about. So now you're. Here you are. Here I am, a Christian. Here I am, saying I, I, you know, I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you, God. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that, that what portion didn't get you saved into heaven. The portion that you live every day, for the rest of your life, the what I'm going to live with for the rest of my life is I want, I will spend every day that I can cleaning up everything that I can out of my life, because I don't want it there. It doesn't need to be there. Yeah. And the, every day that I get rid of it. The more I free, more freedom I get. Let's go. You know, and the freedom in the Lord and God, what yeah. God gives us. He created you in the womb. Yep. He created us perfect. Yeah. In the womb. Yep. And then it, and then after that, it's our parents. Yep. So whatever happens after that, we're a part of the world. Right. So the spirit and everything that He gives you, you know, is is taken on whatever right. forms that the world wants to throw at it. Yep. And the and the lies. He's here to what? What's Satan here to do? Kill you, lie to you, and deceive you. Yep. And that's all he works on every day. And mm-hmm. he he has gotten to be so crafty. He gives us these phones. And what ultimately? Yeah. I am not following a mirror image anymore, of God. I'm going to follow God. Yeah. I'm not going to follow this fake image that yeah. Satan has set up. Yeah. I see it now. Where I didn't see it before, mm. I realize it now. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't. I didn't realize it before. Yeah. And I feel it, and yeah. I feel it a lot less mm, so because good. I'm going with what God says. I'm not going to go with man's feelings or what man says. I'm going to go with what God says. Period. I don't care. I don't care what man says. I don't so care good. what family says or anybody says. It's all He's first. Yeah. Without Woo. a doubt. That is good. I may be 67, but I want to live as long as I can now because I got a mission to do. I'm not waiting to die no more. I'm not waiting to die no more. I'm not waiting it. to retire. I'm waiting to find my next job. Yeah. And it's in missions. Yes. Let's go. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Let's go. Love you. <laughs> Pumped Love up. You a lot. Yeah. I was just, I was thinking about, um, just in closing, I was thinking about the, you know, Jesus stands at the door and knocks and, you know, any, anyone that will open the door to him, he'll come in and dine. And, and so many times we think that's for like unbelievers. You know, like we think it's like evangelistic, like we see it on bumper stickers or whatever. But I'm 99% sure that that's in Revelation and that he's speaking to a church there. He's talking to a church that had lost its way. Mm. And so he's saying, I'm outside of the church looking for you guys to welcome me back in because you lost your first love. And now you're all about this structure and this production and this religiosity and this legalism and creating dogmas. And, and you've pushed the Holy Spirit out because the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? It's the God. If you believe yeah. in the Trinity, which a lot of people, 
most Christians, like Baptist church, whatever, they would say that's an essential for salvation. They would say that's an essential belief to believe in the Trinity. But how many, how many churches right now are not believing in the Trinity? They're saying it with their mouth. The Holy Spirit is on their lips, but he's not filling them up. He's outside knocking. That's right. And so what we're both sharing here is it, it's not about deliverance. It's not about strongholds. It's not all about demons. It's not about, no, we're only talking about this because the church has muffled it for so long. Correct. And now we're walking in so much freedom since he revealed it, since the Holy Spirit revealed it to us. And that we just want it for everybody. If I had a magic pill that could take away your anxiety, your depression, your sickness, all that, best believe I'm going to offer it to you and I'm going to talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. He's yeah. literally here to heal you. He's literally yeah. here to take away your strongholds. Yeah. He's literally here to mend your wounds and cut off the generational curses and give you comfort. He's the advocate. He's the helper. He's the perfect helper that God gave to us. It's such a, it's a free gift, he says. It's a gift that he's, Jesus sent it to us, yep. and we're ignoring him. Yep. We're ignoring him. We don't have a relationship. We talk about him like he's the force in Star Wars. <laughs> yep. And he just kind of is floating around, and every once in a while, maybe he'll be like, oh, look, that person looks like they need help. Let me go and tap them. No, like, we have it within us. As I am in you, you are in me. We have the Holy Spirit resides in us. We carry it around. Everywhere you go, you are a representation of Jesus. And you have all ability to lay hands on the sick and heal them. You have all ability to raise the dead. The only thing that will get in the way of it is faith. Faith, yeah. And God's will, which that's a whole, uh, I'm not even getting into that because some people are like, well, what if it's God's will to be sick or be hurt or whatever? Let's not go there. That's too deep. We'll save that for another podcast. But any last words? Nope. I don't have any last words, really. I okay. Mean, we can keep going. Ah, <laughs> we'll do another one. Yeah. If you liked Randy being on today, Drop a comment, say a nice, oh, also, like, he's looking to start up their podcast, or vodcast, I should say, on YouTube, and it'll probably be Tribe of Christ, um, just be on the lookout for it, or TOC, I'll, I'll, whenever they whenever they develop it, I'll put a link for it in the, um, in the description, so you guys can go to it, because he'll be interviewing some people around here, and it's going to be fire, obviously, he's a great speaker, he always told himself that he wasn't, he wouldn't let us do microphones today, that's why we had to do this. But he's awesome, right? So drop a comment if you liked having Randy on here, and we'll get him on more. Um, if you were touched in any sort of way by this or you feel led to donate, obviously go to shepherdingwellness.com slash give. Uh, we love all you guys very much, everybody yes. that watched and stayed through to the end. And Randy, close us in some prayer for all my, all my subscribers. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. You are so holy, holy, holy are you. And you sit upon a throne in heaven, and you watch down on us. You loved us so much, you gave your one and only Son. Heavenly Father, you, at His bringing home, you gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us until He comes back again. So, Lord, I just pray for all those that are listening out there and all those that are watching at the same time, Lord, that uh, you open their hearts. And uh, I know none of these things are always perfect or laid out real well, um, but we just kind of flow in with whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to talk about. Lord, and just... Uh, uh, just be with them. Show them the light and the kindness and the love that you have for all of us every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good Amen. work. Thanks for being on. <laughs> it's hot over here. <laughs>